Welcome to lesson 57 in Hydraulics 102 and lesson 6 in the section on hydraulic valves and control components. In this lesson we will be learning about one-way valves or as they are also called check valves. What are one-way valves? One-way valves or check valves are control valves that always block fluid flow in one direction but let it flow in the other, the opposite direction. The name of these valves kind of explains how they work. They are also called check valves. Here on the picture on the left we can see a cutaway diagram of the internals of a one-way valve and on the right here we can see a real-life picture or a representation how this valve looks on the outside. This on the lower right corner is the schematic symbol, schematic representation of a one-way check valve. And one thing to remember when looking at hydraulic schematics is that the direction of the fluid flow through these valves is actually opposite from the arrow. You can see the arrow right here pointing to the right, but actually fluid flows in the opposite direction. So remember, use that little trick opposite from the arrow. You can use this little trick to remember it. These valves consist usually of a spring which pushes the closing element and obstructing the flow in one direction. They can also push the closing element by using their own weight and the counter pressure coming from the other side. Now this right here is a cutaway diagram and a symbol and this is a one-way valve with a spring. As you can see, we can see the spring right here. So the fluid pressure pushes the little ball to the right, opens up the pathway and lets fluid flow from the left to the right. You see, opposite than the arrow. We have no flow from the right to the left, but we have flow from left to right. However, the check valve is blocking fluid flow for the fluid coming from the right, okay? One-way valves are used for preventing backflow, they are used as low pressure relief or filter bypasses, they are used when we have to hold loads with minimal leakage, and they are used for switching and sequencing, etc. We will see one example on the end of the lesson. Let's take a closer look at the internals of such a valve. The closing elements can be various. It can be a ball, a cone, a plate, or a membrane. In this check valve, we have a piston with a conical end, as we can see here on number 5. So we have the little conical end. Number 1 is the body of the valve, the piping body or the casing. Number 2 is the inner circlip that holds the ring onto which the spring is placed. Okay, we have the spring at number 4. What happens here? How can we see in which direction the valve permits flow? Let's take a look. We can see that the spring is pushing this piston to the right. Okay, so the, the, the force from the spring is pushing the piston with the closing cone element to the right and it is actually closing this port through which the fluid has to flow. That means that the fluid coming from the right is able to push this piston to the left and open up this port and flow from the right side to the left side. The fluid flow from the left to the right is impossible because the piston is closed and the force from the spring is acting to the right. The pressure from the fluid from the left side would only complement to this force the pushing of, 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 the, of the piston to the right, it will only complement this spring force and basically the pressure from the fluid from the left side would close it even more, pushing it even more to the right. On the right here we can also see an example of a one-way valve with a schematic symbol accompanying the cutaway diagram. The only difference here is that this valve lets fluid flow from the left to the right side. Here we have the piston and have the spring and we have the schematic symbol right here. The schematic symbol for this kind of valve would be the same as this one but only mirrored on the other side. So we would have this part here and we will have the ball here with the spring. Okay, so 
we have fluid flowing in this direction. One-way valves, or more precisely this group of control valves that regulates flow in such a manner, can be classified in a couple of different groups, or better to say types of valves. We have one-way valves with a spring that pushes on the closing element. We have one-way valves without a spring, which use the counter pressure and the weight of the closing element. These kinds of valves are usually installed vertically because they have to use the force of gravity, okay. We have pilot operated check valves. Now these are interesting. These valves are opened by a pilot line and they can actually permit flow in both directions if the pilot line is pressurized. So if we bring the pressurized fluid through the pilot line, we push this ball, we open it, and then we have a one-way valve that actually is a two-way valve because it permits the fluid going from this direction to pass the valve. On number four, we have the shuttle type check valve. These valves have two pressurized inlet ports and they have a one output port. We'll see how they work in one of the next slides. And on number five, we have actually a combination of two control components on a flow control valve and a one-way check valve. And this, this combination is called adjustable flow control with bypass valve. Let's take a closer look at a pilot operated check valve. These are often used in hydraulic systems because they can be actuated from a distance using pilot lines, which actuate it internally. In that way, you can open up the opposite direction so fluid can flow both ways. If you take a look at this picture, this valve right now is permitting fluid flow from port A to port B. So fluid can come here, it can push this piston to the right and it can go to B. And we actually can't bring fluid from B to A because there is no way of fluid passing through. However, this doesn't end here with these valves, which have this piston, which can be pushed by the pilot line pressure to the right. Now, this piston, when we push it right, we open up the path of fluid flow from B to A. So when we push this to the right side, we are going to open up the opposite pathway. Now, what happens here? The fluid can flow in this direction from B to A as long as there is pressure in the X pilot line. So fluid, pressurized fluid comes here and it pushes this piston to the right, which eventually pushes this piston to the right and opens up the port. So as long as there is pressure here, pushing this piston to the right, we are going to have the pathway B to A open. The Y line right here is the return line for the pilot line because the fluid from this space, which is marked by number one, is going to end up here eventually. And we have to have a way to drain this fluid because we don't want counter pressure on the other side of this piston. On the right here, we can see a schematic symbol for these kinds of valves. We have the B and A directions and we have the X and Y pilot lines. Remember from the DCV lesson, we said that pilot lines are usually marked with X or Y or Z. Shuttle valves have a very interesting way of working. They have two pressurized ports, P1 and P2, that come into it and one line that goes to the working element. As you can see from this ball, from this from this diagram, and the forces that act on it, you can conclude that the port, which is not pressurized, or has a smaller pressure than the other port, is going to be closed. Why? Well, because the fluid from the pressurized line, or the line that has a bigger pressure than the other line, will push the ball to the right, and it will actually close up this port. Pretty neat, huh? They are used, for example, as we can see here, when we have two different places or points of activating the same system. Now, here we have two different DCVs that control the same cylinder and in between 
we have the shuttle valve. This is the symbol for these kinds of valves. So you can see here on this also, P1 is larger than P2, P1 pushes the ball to the right, closing the P2 port, and if P2 is larger than P1, then P2 pushes the ball to the left, closes this port, and we have supply from P2 line. Now adjustable flow control with bypass valve. These are also called speed control valves. Although they belong to the flow control valves because of their function, which we are going to talk about in one of the next lessons, but because of their one-way action and one-way check valve implementation, we are going to classify them with the one-way valves. This component right here is the flow control valve and it has a little arrow on it, okay, which basically means that it can be adjusted. So we can adjust the flow on the go. The flow restriction in this combination is only affecting the fluid going from right to the left, okay? So only in this direction is the fluid restricted by this flow control valve. If we're going from the left to the right, then we have this bypass valve which the fluid can go through. Remember, fluid always goes through the point where it has less obstructions. Here we can see a cutaway diagram of such a valve. So you see the flow restriction by this one-way check valve right here. So actually the fluid in this situation can flow freely in this direction, okay? But when it comes to the opposite direction, the fluid flow is governed by the size of this orifice right here that is created by the flow control valve, okay? And now we're gonna take a quick look at an example which is going to implement both this speed control valve and the pilot operated check valve. Here we have a simple circuit, a simple open loop circuit. It consists of a one-way hydraulic pump that is not adjustable, a pressure relief valve for safety. We have a filter right here. We have a four slash three solenoid operated directional control valve, which has the middle position open, so it's connected. We have a double acting cylinder, which is placed vertically, which means that we are going to lift something with this bad boy. We have a pilot operated check valve and we have a speed control valve or an adjustable flow control with a bypass valve. So the task here is that we are lifting something. So we have a constant force F or maybe better to write FG from some element that we put on top of our piston rod. So we want to lift this weight and we also want the cylinder to stop and remain in the position when we put this DCV in the neutral position. So when we stop lifting, we want this hydraulic cylinder to stay in position or more precisely, we want the weight to stay in position. We don't want the weight pushing it down. Okay, so how do we do it? Well, first off, we have to put the DCV in the third position, okay? And what this is going to do, it's going to drive the pressurized fluid through the check valve number one, which is going to pass freely because this is the direction that it can pass through. It will come to this adjustable flow control, but it will actually go through the bypass valve to the front of the piston. It will fill the front of the piston. Eventually the pressure from the fluid here will exert a force and will lift the weight up. Now, when we disengage the solenoid and when the directional control valve goes to the middle position, we actually cycle the fluid back to the tank because that's the path of least resistance. At this point, this line right here, let me just erase everything. So at this point, we have fluid right here and we have this weight pushing down, FG, okay? So this fluid right here is pressurized by this weight and it actually is pressurizing this entire line, but it came 
to the one-way check valve that we have right here. And this one-way check valve is not letting any of the fluid flow through it. So this one-way check valve is, in other words, our savior. It is holding the weight in position. But what happens when we need to lower the weight? This check valve kind of becomes our enemy. Well, because this is a pilot-operated check valve, it actually doesn't. Let me show you what happens. We put the DCV in the first position. In other words, we are pressurizing this line right here. And we can see that we have this connection here and we have the pilot line going to the check valve. This pressurized fluid that we are bringing through this line is going through the pilot line and opening up the check valve. In doing so, it is opening the pathway for the fluid to flow from this flow control valve back to the tank. And what this flow control valve is doing right now for us, it is actually controlling the speed of the weight that is going down. So we don't want that cylinder to just drop down immediately. We want the lowering to be controlled. So this flow control valve is what is controlling the speed of the weight going down. Of course, fluid is also filling the opposite direction and pushing the piston down. So this flow control valve is nothing more than a brake for us uh, to not let the weight go down fast. Now you see now how valves can make or break your system. This is it for the one way valves lesson. Thank you for listening and for staying focused and see you in the next lesson in which we will be learning about shutoff valves.